Yes, happy Father's Day to the fathers out here. And um, for you weather geeks, Father's Day also happens to be the longest day of sunlight of the year, 14 hours and 10 minutes, if you want to be precise today. Speaking of geeks, the app. If you're not using the app, one of the things that happened during COVID is we no longer were printing bulletins. And we were then adding the sermon notes to the app. And I encourage you this morning in particular, because I am going to have several really long quotes, and that's really unusual for me, but they are all in the app. So if you don't have something to write on, you will be able to look at that and review that after the message on the app. And I would encourage you to consider that. Ever read a book that weeks Months later, you can't seem to shake it, just keeps coming up, it comes up in conversations, you just, it just, somehow or another the Lord moves, that, takes that book, does something in you. Well, nearly 50 years ago, right after I got out of high school, a guy named J.I. Packer wrote a book called Knowing God. And I read it a long time ago, and I reread it earlier this year. And Billy Graham said of the book, Dr. Packer has the rare ability to deal with profound and basic spiritual truths in a practical and highly readable way. This from Billy Graham, who was arguably probably the best preacher in the last hundred years to deal with basic spiritual truths in a highly understandable and practical way. I mention this because today being Father's Day, we have a growing number of new fathers here, and I have the privilege of knowing a great many of them and many other fathers, and I count it a blessing to serve alongside these men as they seek to be better fathers, better husbands, and better members of the kingdom. Better. Ask any two people which is the better mayonnaise, and you're going to get two different answers. Why? Because better is a highly subjective word. What determines whether someone is a better dad or a better father? Truthfully, it depends on who you ask. Which, instead of asking someone to define better, Scripture reveals in God the Father what the ultimate better would be like as it comes to being a father. Which brings me back to Packer in his book, Knowing God. For the first 18 chapters of the book, Packer, he just lays out what it means to know the one true God. It's just marvelous to read it. And, in, and more importantly, not just to know him, but more importantly, to be known by him. Then in chapter 19, he opens up the chapter with the statement that is the reason why I can't get this book off of my mind. Read along with me. It begins with a question. What is a Christian? The question can be answered in many ways, but the richest answer I know is that a Christian is one who has God as father. A Christian is one who has God as father. He goes on to say, you sum up the whole New Testament teaching in a single phrase if you speak of it as the revelation of the fatherhood of the Holy Creator. 
In the same way, you sum up the whole of the New Testament religion if you describe it as the knowledge of God as one's Holy Father. If you want to judge how well a person understands Christianity, find out how much they make of the thought of being God's child and having God as their father. If this is not the thought that prompts and controls their worship and prayers and their whole outlook on life, it means that they do not understand Christianity very well at all. For everything that Christ taught, everything that makes the New Testament new and better than the old, is summed up in the knowledge of the fatherhood of God. Father is the Christian name for God. You just heard Johnny use it when he, pre- when he prayed, and you heard John do likewise. We address him as Father, and not just Father. Of all the world religions, Christianity is the only religion that dare approach God as Abba, Father. Now, Elizabeth had a fun time this week as she was chasing down. I wanted to make sure that what I've heard my whole life, and I, many of you know I was raised in a Jewish neighborhood, is that Abba is Hebrew for Daddy. So we're not just approaching God reverently as God. We're approaching him affectionately and intimately in a way that you would only address family. Daddy, father. Now, contrast that with your relationship with your earthly father. Probably safe to say relationships with our earthly fathers varies widely across this room. Even safer to say that in some ways, that relationship continues to impact our relationship with God the Father. It has to. It's only natural. As Christians, relationship-wise, we tend to emphasize Jesus, as we rightly should, and the Holy Spirit some. But Jesus himself taught us that our prayers should be directed to the Father. So how do we learn or relearn how to have a proper relationship with God the Father? How to worship and pray? The Psalms. This is the Summer of Psalms. And Max Lucado wrote a book on the Psalms from which I will read another quote so I don't mess it up. Worship and prayer. In 2,000 years, we haven't worked out the kinks. We still struggle with the right words in prayer. We fumble over scripture. We don't know when to kneel. We don't know when to stand. We don't know how to pray. And for that reason, God gave us the Psalms. The Psalms could be better titled God's Common Book of Prayers. This collection of hymns and petitions are strung together by one thread, a heart hungry for God. Is your heart hungry for God? Every Psalm is a dialogue between a writer and God. And in this sense, all Psalms have one thing in common. They give us words to say when we stand or kneel before God. Words for worship, words for prayer. This Father's Day, our first questions are for the dads. Is God the Father your daddy father? Is he the role model that guides your choices as a father? The next question is for all of us. Is your heart hungry for God? If your answer is yes and you tend to struggle with how to talk with God, and I pick up on that, it's with God, not to God. My hope is that after a glimpse at just two psalms this morning, you'll see why reading the psalms regularly will improve both your worship and your prayer life. Let's pray with me. Father, I have been wrestling with this and with this book and how best to convey what it's like to, be, to know you as Daddy Father. And I pray, Lord, that you will use these words from these two psalms to encourage those of your people who attend grace, and whether it be here or whether they're online, for I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.
I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I'm going to look you all dead in the eye and say, I don't have a favorite psalm. Just really don't. And that bothered me. John says, just preach on your favorite psalm. Well, I don't have one. <laughs> Preparing for this week, I believe I discovered why and why I personally prefer Proverbs. The principles provided by Proverbs that guided me through the last half of my business career, and I'm pretty sure I read through this, you know, if you don't know, Proverbs are 31 chapters, there's one for every day of the month, and I probably read it 15 months straight preparing to sell my company. I, the principles just are great for guiding me. So, why? Well, for me, it's because for most of my Christian life, I, prepared, I preferred to do what I thought God wanted me to do, to talking with him, to having a relationship with him. I wasn't looking to have a relationship. What I was looking for was to get right with God. And then I, if any of you know me, just give me the rules. What are the rules? We'll deal with the rules, and then off we go. So Proverbs are fantastic. The fool does this, the wise does that, off you go. It's perfect for a do it. The doers who prefer the doer, just do this, do it right, to the touchy-feely stuff. Can any of you relate? I got to tell you, I'm a natural for Proverbs, and I completely understand why I wasn't a Psalm guy. Are you ready? Psalms are personal, relational, emotional, cranky, sometimes even defiant. So in other words, they're much more like my better half. When I asked Sherry which was her favorite psalm, she immediately quoted from verse 5 in Psalm 30. Psalm 30, if you're not familiar with it, is a psalm about joy. And I learned an awful lot about joy lately. There's another book that I can't shake, and it's called Rare Leadership. And when I was scheduled to kick off the summer in the psalms last week, our theme was going to be joy, and there's a lot to learn about joy in the psalms. But I'm just gonna, I just have time to share this one little tidbit from the book. It says that the Psalms teach us that joy is found in the face of God. Just think on that. Jesus said that he came that our joy might be complete. And there is a direct correlation between our relational joy with God and our ability to endure hardship. Is the joy of the Lord really your strength? Going any further with that, we'll have to wait for another time. But this morning, we want to get back to Sherry and Psalm 30 and verse 5. It begins with David thanking God, a common theme for David. And if you're unsure how to pray a prayer of thanksgiving, read verses 1 through 3, which we are not going to do because it provides an excellent example of how you pray joyfully. Jumping in at verse 4. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name, for his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Comforting words. Those are words that have comforted my bride for the better part of the last four decades, and I'm really grateful that she's had them when I haven't been what I needed to be at that time. There's just things in life that happen that way, and you need to lean into God. But did you notice something? That promise is not for everyone. Look back at verse 4 with me. Sing praises to the Lord who? O ye his saints. Earlier, when I quoted from J.I. Packer, I intentionally skipped something, something that's extremely important. Between the two quotes that we read, Packer wrote the following immediately after a Christian is one who has God as father. He continued, but cannot this be said of every person, Christian or not? Emphatically, no. The idea that all are Christians of God is not found anywhere 
in the Bible. The Old Testament shows God is the father, not of all, but of his own people, the seed of Abraham. The New Testament has a world vision, but it too shows God as the father, not of all, but of those who, knowing themselves to be sinners, put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their divine sin bearer and master, and so become Abraham's spiritual seed. Sonship is n- to God is not, therefore, a universal status into which everyone enters by natural birth, but a supernatural gift which one receives through receiving Jesus. I'm typically not a big fan of long quotes, and this is our third one already this morning, but I have to tell you, Packer so beautifully laid out what it takes to have God as your father, I didn't see any reason to try to recast that in my own words. To be a saint and a recipient of the joy found in Psalm 30, one must be a child of God. And to be his child, you must have an answer for your offenses. We must be forgiven for God the Father to be our daddy. For that we turn to Psalm 32. Read along with me. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in who the iniqui- in who for- I'm sorry, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. In verse 5, David is speaking. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Verse 8, the Lord is speaking. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go, and I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Before I go any further, I might not have been a Psalms guy, but I read that and I read that when I was wrestling with difficult matters in the business. Verse 10, many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Psalm 32. You know, most of the Psalms are less than 16 verses. I mean, there's just, they're they're really short. They're they're these, these relational, conversational prayers, but Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts the Lord in the Lord. Then they can be actually in verse 11 and be glad, rejoicing, shouting for joy, no matter what's going on in their life. Listen, if you're his child, everything is in sunshine and rainbows. Psalm 30 told us there can be weeping and sorrow. But joy comes to those that have God, God who created everything accessible as daddy, as your family father. Is God your father? There's a tough word here this morning because he's either daddy or he's judge. There's no third option, by the way. People rationalize and make up all kinds of stuff so that there's a third option. There's, he's daddy or he's your judge, period. Is it Hebrews 10.31, a fearful thing to fall at the hands of a living God? Or is it 1 John 3.1, which I read this morning? See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. So if God is your father, if he's your daddy, then you are his child. And the joy of the Lord can be your strength. Still unsure? That's okay. Every single one of us who is a believer was unsure at one time. And frankly, even after you become a believer, There are days when you're just not sure. That's okay. That's what the Psalms are all about. 
because you can read the Psalms and see how cranky some of the writers get with God. I mean, he's God. Us getting cranky with him is not a problem. Every single one of you fathers, and you mothers too, have a relationship with your children where outsiders may not get it. Right? I know that's the way it was with me and my sister-in-law. You know, I just, I just thought that, they, that you know, she should be considering other ideas for parenting. It, it's none of my business. Why? Because they're a family. And in that family and in the family, parents, by and large, there are exceptions, but by and large, parents understand their kids to understand when they're getting cranky, when they're tired, when they're acting out, when there's something going on that they need to intervene, by and large, when you're an attentive parent, that's what you're all about. If that's what you're all about, who we all know, every single one of us, is just a fallen, saved-by-grace individual, what would you think it's like that God the Father, Father, as your dad, you don't think he's capable of understanding what you're going through? The fact that this is really not a good time? I mean... That's the whole point about when it's family. When it's family, there's things that are understood. And we as his children have, we have the invitation to come to the throne room of the Creator God anytime we want, whatever is on our mind, no matter how trivial or how serious, he's daddy. It's remarkable. And I have to be blunt. I never really was looking for that kind of a relationship with God. I mean, I, you know, it's not something I'm proud of, but at least I'm honest. For the majority of my walk, I was content to know that it was okay. I was good. I believed in Jesus. I believed he did everything he said he did. I was all in on all of it, but it was very, very policy-driven. Proverbs, baby, just give me the principles and I'm, I'm good to go. And the longer I walked in the faith and the more I realized that I wasn't spending time trying to be intimate with God, it came to mind that that's because in my family, in my household, we were very German and German, I watched my grandfather, you know, he kind of, I mean, it, it, there was just nothing. There was no affection. It was just do the right thing, you know. And so it's all about doing. You do the right thing. And I didn't feel unloved. I just thought that's what it was supposed to be. So when it was said I was supposed to love God, I got it. Based on my family, the baggage that I brought to the relationship, I was loving God. That's the way we do it. We do the right thing. We just follow the, we know the rules, we follow the rules. If that's you, there's nothing that's, like, you're not evil because that's the way you do it. I never felt evil. I felt very Christian. But what I did miss was the intimacy and the relationship that I saw and learned through my wife's eyes in her relationship with God, that it could be different and that it can be just so not distanced. And that changed me. And it can change you. So if you're still unsure, here's my encouragement to you. Psalm 32. Read it. Reread it. Pray it. Pray it till you can sing it. Know what it is when you get, when, and you'll know you're there. You'll know you're there when you get to verse 11 and you can own it. It can be yours. You can look at that and say, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. I'm glad in the Lord. I'm rejoicing and I'm shouting for joy. I have so much more to say to you guys about joy, but I am out of time. You want a better relationship with your heavenly father? Read the Psalms. Any psalm. And you'll have words for when you pray and when you praise and when you worship 
and you just want to walk down the road someday and sing a song, Psalms can give you that. Pray with me. Lord, I, I'm, I apologize for the decades that I literally wasted just being um, just a good, what in my mind, a good Christian that was following the rules. And, it's, and, and it, it took me a long time to understand that you were interested in having a relationship, not the fact that I was keeping the rules and that that obedience may have been okay. It, it was, it was, I was short-selling myself because I, I had an opportunity to spend closer, be closer to you. And that that closeness is, was made available by what Jesus had done for me. I continue to disappoint like every single person that can hear my voice right now. But I'm grateful for the fact that in you is a loving, caring daddy father. The perfect father this Father's Day. For I pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen.